I recently picked up this older HP Z230 workstation PC from a local Goodwill for only $15. And in today's video, I'm gonna be deep cleaning it and turning it into the ultimate emulation station. Now, a little over two months ago, I made a video where I turned an older Lenovo laptop into a portable emulation station. And I asked you guys if you would be interested in seeing the same thing done with a desktop PC. And with a bunch of comments, the answer was a resounding yes. So here we go. So according to the Goodwill, we got a Xeon 1225 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. We've got eight gigs of DDR3 RAM and no hard drive or operating system. Now, one interesting thing is there's actually a sticker on the top of this thing that says property of Florida A&M University. So I'm guessing it was a school computer and it probably sat in like a library somewhere. Now I will say on the inside, this thing is filthy, but I mean, hey, we got a little Cooler Master fan. We got some AMD Fire Pro graphics card and it overall looks to be in pretty good condition. It's just really dirty. I mean, this thing is just caked in dust, but it gives us something to work with. Now, the first thing I did was actually boot the computer into the BIOS. Now, I wanted to see if the computer would turn on, but I also wanted to make sure that the hardware, specifically the CPU and RAM, were both detected. And according to system information, it all checks out. All right, now that we know she works, let's go ahead and give her a deep clean. So I started by entirely disassembling the PC. Now, yes, I guess I could have just dusted off some of the major components, like the GPU and the CPU cooler and called it a day. But after seeing just how dirty this thing was, I knew I wouldn't really be satisfied until I take the thing entirely apart, clean every component individually, and then put it back together. So that's exactly what I did. I first started by removing all the screws to the motherboard, followed by the screws to the CPU cooler. Now I made sure to alternate the screw I was loosening so as to not damage the CPU. And with the CPU cooler gone, I finally removed the motherboard, followed by the power supply, And finally, the disk drive. And then after removing the front panel, I disassembled the speaker, the front I.O. assembly, and finally, the power button. Okay, now that we've got this thing as disassembled as it's gonna get, let's go ahead and clean the components individually. Now the first component I cleaned was the graphics card. Now I spent more time on the graphics card than any other component because this thing requires a little bit of maintenance. So I took off the tiny heatsink. I'm just kidding, it's, it's average sized, <laughs> right? So I took off the massive heatsink and it showed me just how much dust was on the VRAM chips. So I used a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol to clean off some of the dust and also just the surface of the circuit board. I then used some more alcohol to clean off the old crusty thermal paste from the GPU die. And once the GPU circuit board was prepped, I then cleaned the heat sink and fan with the same combination of Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol. Now once the heat sink and fan were cleaned and reassembled, I then installed some fresh Corsair TM30 thermal paste to the die of the GPU. And after a perfectly horrendous thermal paste job, I then reinstalled the heatsink. And just like that, our little AMD Fire Pro V3900 is ready to rock. I then spent probably way too long cleaning every individual component. Now some of the more simple components, like the hard drive caddy, which is pretty much just plastic, required nothing more than a towel and some warm water. But some of the more complex components, like the RAM and motherboard, required isopropyl alcohol. And after just generally cleaning the motherboard with some isopropyl alcohol, I then removed the crusty thermal paste from the CPU. And after cleaning the front panel, the last thing left to do was to try to get in every little area of the empty tower. And once everything was cleaner than it probably was brand new, it was time to start reassembling. Now the reassembly process actually wasn't that bad. I pretty much just went in the exact opposite order as I took the thing apart. I mean, do you see how clean this thing is? Do you remember how dirty it was when I took it apart? But anyway, I slowly reassembled the PC and it was actually really satisfying.
Now once it came time to reapply some thermal paste to the CPU, I made sure to clean it one more time with some isopropyl alcohol. And after another horrendous thermal paste job, I reinstalled the heatsink. Now you may remember that I bought this thing without a hard drive, so I'm going to be installing this 4TB WD drive. Now yes, I could install an SSD, but a hard drive is cheaper, it fits more data, and honestly you don't need anything that zippy to run Botocera. From there, it's just a matter of cable management. Now if you're going to do this, I highly recommend taking pictures before you take the thing apart as it helps you a lot when it comes to plugging everything back in. And just like that, this HP Z230 workstation has been fully restored and given new life. I'm honestly really happy with how well this thing cleaned up. So I paired it with an older Dell XPS monitor from around the same era and immediately went into the BIOS to make sure all the hardware was still detected. And thankfully, it looks like everything is. Guys, we did it. Okay, now that the actual hardware's been restored, we need to focus on the software. Now, instead of running an OS like Windows, which is designed for a variety of tasks, we're going to be running an operating system called Botocera. Now, Botocera is a distribution of Linux designed solely for emulation, which basically means that it cuts out the other background tasks and stuff that draw power from the PC, and it focuses all of the computer's resources entirely to emulation. So we currently have a 4 terabyte WD hard drive inside the PC, but there's nothing on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my USB drive with Botocera installed on it, and we're going to copy over Botocera onto the hard drive. Now listen, because this isn't really a how-to video, I'm not going to be showing you exactly how you download and install Botocera, but in the description below, I've linked a really good video that shows you how to do it step by step. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install Botocera, move over some games, and I'll see you on the other side. So the first game I tested was Mario Kart Super Circuit for the Game Boy Advance. Now listen, when it comes to emulation, the Game Boy Advance is not a system that requires a lot of horsepower. In fact, the majority of you could probably run Game Boy Advance games pretty comfortably on your toaster. Anyway, this PC handles Game Boy Advance very well. Next up is California Speed for the N64. Now this is the first time we're really getting into some true 3D graphics, and honestly this PC is handling it like a boss. The textures are set to default, but the 3D models are upscaled to 1080p. This really makes these older N64 games look really good. There's no major frame stutters, and it's just smooth as butter. Next up is God of War Chains of Olympus for the PSP. Now this is one of the most hardware intensive PSP games to emulate, but I really wanted to stress test this system. Again, the textures are set to default, but the 3D models are upscaled to 1080p, and man, this game looks amazing. There's no major frame stutters, and this $15 PC is running this game better than the original PSP, while being upscaled to 1080p. This is amazing. The last game I'll be testing today is Mario Kart Double Dash for the Nintendo GameCube. Listen, I would love to keep going and try some Wii U and Switch emulation, but recently Nintendo's been striking channels for showing emulation of systems newer than the GameCube. Now I don't think our little graphics card could handle those systems anyway, but I'd still love to try. Anyway, the GameCube is very playable. Our little GPU just really can't handle upscaling the 3D models anymore, but it still looks great. I'm so impressed with this system. The amount of fun you can have with something like this is insane. As we just saw, this thing was really capable for $15, but one of the best things is it has 4 terabytes of storage, which means you could essentially add every game for every console up to and including like maybe the PS2 before you run into any storage problems, and then just slap in another hard drive. That's the fun with these systems. So you may be wondering what I'm going to do with this one. I'm a college student studying electrical engineering, and one of my roommates is computer science, and we love stuff like this. So I'm going to take it with me to our dorm room, and we're going to hook it up to the projector that we watch movies and stuff on. That way we we have an emulation station large screen that plays some of the coolest games of all time. So anyway, here are some different clips of me and my roommate playing some games together.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, and if you've enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it would go a long way towards helping me reach a thousand subs. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.